If you are looking to discover brand new adventure games, then you have come to the right place. Hello and welcome to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and in today's video I'm going to be looking at loads of demos that I managed to play at the BAE. That is the Big Adventure Event, which happened on Steam not long ago, hosted by HitSense. Before we head into these demos though, if like me you love adventure games from the old school games like Monkey Island and Broken Sword through to new ones like games that are going to be on this list, then be sure to hit subscribe because I only create adventure game content. And whilst you're down there it'd be ace if you could hit that like button to show YouTube that adventure games are well and truly alive. Thanks very much. The BAE from HitSense happened between the 21st and the 25th of January 2021. It highlighted around about 80 adventure games some of which had already been released but the majority are upcoming within the next six months or so. At this festival I managed to get my hands on 17 of the demos and I'm going to be covering every single one. At number 17 we have One Dreamer from One Dreamer Company. This is a game I hadn't heard about or come across at all before. I am a sucker for pixel art and I enjoyed that aspect of it but the gameplay aspect for me was a little confusing. It's all about being a game developer and you can change things in the game by changing the code. You can change the sounds of animals, you can change the conversation trees, it was all a little meta. If, unlike me, you're a game developer, this is probably one to watch. Skipping straight on to 16, it's Aquamarine from Mobile Studios. This is due for release in summer 2021, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a point and click adventure game. Yes you point, and you click, but it's more of an exploration game. The story is we're on a futuristic planet and we have to explore the area. Each time you move you use up fuel, so you have to collect gems to increase that fuel. The good thing about this game is that every time you play through it, it will be different, because you can go in loads of different directions and discover different things each time. The hand drawn art was nice, and if you do like survival games, then I think this will be on your list. At number 15 is Tiny Room Stories Town Mystery from Kiari Games. Now this game has already been released, a few years ago actually, but I didn't know that when I started to play. It's billed as a casual adventure game and I can kind of see their point. It's a fun isometric game with hidden item elements. It wasn't too taxing and I enjoyed the puzzles on offer. And what I liked particularly was the way that you could switch the rooms around. So you think you've looked at the entire room? Think again. There's a couple of walls you've missed. Yeah, it was alright. At number 14 from Smarto Club we have Teacop. Completely different from the cyberpunk mystery pixel art games that seem to be coming our way quite soon. This is a lovely pastel shade calm game where you play a frog who loves her tea but unfortunately she is out of it. Your mission then is to go find ingredients for your tea. There were several characters you can go and talk to and a couple of mini games too. It was calming and relaxing. At number 13 we've got Anomaly Hunter from Hock Games which comes out in April 2021. Another hidden item kind of game this one reminds me of all the Where's Wally games, or Waldo if you're in America. Like most hidden item games, there are several items that you have to find, and the purpose here is to find out what happened in the past. We can rewind time and also look for clues there. I enjoyed it. At number 12 we've got Watch Over Christmas from Dianus Games. Now this game, if it was released now, is quite out of season, having just missed the mark. So this isn't out until the end of 2021, because of course it's about Christmas. So in the demo Santa has been kidnapped. For a Christmas game this looks and plays very well and if you have children this will be right up their alley. The puzzles weren't too hard and the music was really jolly. So keep an eye out in the festive period for Watch Over Christmas. California Studios bring us Sarawak at number 11 and this is out right now. Fairly reminiscent of Over the Alps from last year, this is a game that mainly uses just text. We play a young woman who has been embroiled in a crime at the university nearby. As we read through the text it is up to us to decide what route to take. Normally the way I play these games is I'm quite calm and I stick to the law. First scene we are being interviewed by a police officer and I would answer all their questions nicely. But I thought on my first run through, what the heck, let's be abrasive and rash. As the story progresses there are one or two extra puzzles which don't involve any words whatsoever and the demo can show us the first two chapters. I've already got my copy of the full game so I'm looking forward to delving into that and like I say it's out now. Into the top 10 now and at number 10 we have Justin Wack and the Big Time Hack from Warm Kitten Games. Time travel is the game here and we play as Justin Wack, 
and we accidentally time travel back to caveman period. And because this is an adventure game, of course, a caveman time travels forwards into our time. From what I played here, this will be a really good fun game. There were some solid jokes and interesting characters. In the demo, we can switch between three of them. I had a good time with Justin Wack, so I'll probably play the full game of this this year. At number 9 we have Framing Doors from Jinxit Games, which should be out this year. This hand-drawn wonder comes from a one-woman team. We play as Bay Doors who wakes up one day and finds out she's been framed for murder. In our quaint little house there are a few things that seem amiss, namely some toys that move and our poor demonic rabbit. If the story weaves together as it has in the demo all the way through the game, this will be one to enjoy thoroughly. At number 8 from Golosso Games is Inspector Waffles. Yes I know, it's another anthropomorphic detective game. I have lost count. However, there were two things going for this from the start for me. One, it has fantastic basic pixel art. I don't mean that in a bad way, I love pixel art. But this pixel art is a lot brighter and broader, which adds a unique quality to it. The second thing that drew me to it is Inspector Waffles himself. He's a hoot. The dialogue is sharply written and the puzzles well thought out. This is due out early 2021 so keep an eye on that soon. At number 7 from the Moon Pirates is Don't Forget Me. Thanks to the BAE this is one that I came across for the first time at the festival. It reminds me a little bit of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. As the premise is we delve into people's memories and by doing this we have to unlock these memories. So asking several questions about what we know already will lead to more avenues being open. Reminded me a little bit like Minority Report. There's no release date yet for this, but keep an eye out in 2021. At number six is a game, to be honest, I didn't really want to play, and that is Brock the Investigator from Cowcat. And the reason I didn't want to play it is because it's hailed as a punch and click. So it's half a beat em up and half an adventure game. I love adventure games, but any other kind of game, I just don't like and I don't get on with. So I left this very, very late in the festival. However, I thought I'd better play it and it's coming at number six. Brock is a private investigator who is an alligator, but it seems he's down on his luck. He's living in the slums, he's got no money, and it's all going wrong. In the demo, there are three modes you can play from purely adventure game, a mix of the two, and hardcore mode. I would have gone for purely adventure game, but I thought I'd best try out the action as well, so I went for the middle mode. And although, yes, the action sequences for me would just smash the buttons and see what happens, they really take no time at all. So switching to the story, that's where it's strong for me. This has gone from not really wanting to play it at all to pretty high on my wish list. The prologue is out already, so go and play that now, and the rest of it is out this year. We're into the top five now, and at number five is Lord Winklebottom Investigates from Cave Monsters. For me, this is one that has stood out over previous festivals, which I never got round to playing, so I'm very excited that I finally did. And yes, just like Inspector Waffles, it's an anthropomorphic crime detective, as we play a somewhat Sherlock Holmes upper class giraffe detective with his hippopotamus sidekick. The game will live and die on these characters, and thankfully, they are just brilliant. Forgetting about the case that I tried to solve in the demo, the puzzles were good. The secondary characters were a hoot, but our two main heroes steal the show. I could sit and listen to these two talk for ages, and just like Framing Doors, if the full game continues like the demo, this is going to be one to watch. At number 4 we have The Corruption Within from Cosmic Void and Dave Seaman. This game is a wonderful collaboration, it's creepy, it's beautiful, and it made me jump a few times too. Yes, you know me, I'm a sucker for pixel art, and this has it in spades. The atmosphere is on point. Right from the off, it's got a creepy vibe as we go camping with our family, but wake up to discover we're on our own and our wife and daughter are missing, and the only lead is a creepy mansion quite near. So we're trying to get into that mansion, but they're just being a bit, a bit of an arse. After finally entering the mansion, it gets even creepier. An absolute top demo, and I'm very looking forward to the full game into the top three now and if you haven't already it would be awesome if you could hit that like button it really really does help thanks very much a tour de force of a game now and it is the drifter from power hoof i've kind of vaguely heard of the game through the ether over the past year or so but it wasn't until this demo came that i really understood what all the fuss is about we play as a drifter heading back to his old hometown but when we get there we realize that night is all as it seems 
And one thing leads to another and, yeah, spoiler, we end up dead. However, not completely dead. Time is rewound slightly and we get to do things slightly different and see what happens next. Man, this was really cool and I was gutted when the demo ends. And if it weren't for the next two games, this would be definitely number one. And number two from Julia Minamata is The Crimson Diamond. Yet another one which I've had on my wish list for ages and never got round to. So what better way than at the BAE? I'm going to be honest here, I didn't grow up with any Sierra games whatsoever. I was a fully LucasArts kid. And so when word of the Colonel's Bequest is mentioned, it just goes over my head. But having researched this a little bit, Julie Minamata is a huge Colonel's Bequest fan. And I can definitely see from the artwork here. The story is intriguing. A diamond has appeared in a small town and we play as Nancy Maple, writing for a newspaper going to find out about it. And we enter this creepy town and just like the corruption within, a creepy mansion. What's so great about this game is that it's got a text parser. That's right, you have to type in your commands. Old school. I hadn't played a text parser game since ooh, the mid 80s, but I remember those short keys quite quickly. The mansion itself is gorgeous. Julia has done this all of herself, so hats off. Again, no date as yet, just when it's ready, but hopefully, like the Drifter, 2021 is the year. If you know of any games that are coming out this year, then please let me know in the comments below and any demos that you've played, I'd love to hear your views too. So my favorite game of the entire festival is Theropods. This is a game from Kostos Skifstas and Tiny Stuffs and is due for release in 2021. I covered this very briefly in a video last year based on the trailer alone. For me, the trailer was all about the pixel art and the fact it's about dinosaurs. An adventure game about dinosaurs? I can't really think of any. So when I loaded up the trailer, I was delighted to find out that the gameplay itself was magnificent. It's so basic. The characters don't talk, it's just grunts. I mean, they are cavemen. We play as a flame-haired woman who's trying to catch a dinosaur, presumably for her tea. We get help, in inverted commas, from two of her male comrades, who mainly fall out of trees and just stand around. Not only do we have to pick up and use things, general adventure game fare, but the way that the dinosaur moves we have to figure out and go to different paths to cut it off. And just like the perfect demo, it ends at the right time, as a flaming mass comes and hits a mountain. There's no date set in stone for this, so 2021 is hopefully the year that will be coming out. And there you have it, the 17 demos that I played at the big adventure event. Hats off to HitSense for organising it all, I'm sure it would have been a big headache, but it was totally worth it. And hopefully this video has shone even more light on the games that are coming this year. On a side note to that, if you do want to know about new games, I've just started a brand new show called, imaginatively, The Adventure Game News Show. And that drops every Friday. Thanks very much for watching this video so far. And until next time, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is you're doing right now, and take care. Sounds rather like your forte, what? <laughs>